Are you looking to enhance your 3D printer with a color touchscreen with cloud connectivity, but you don't quite have the confidence to set it up? Well, today we're looking at the AstroBox Touch. Octoprint is a staple for many who love to 3D print. In a nutshell, you put special software called Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi, you connect it to your 3D printer, and then you can access your 3D printer over the network. Doing that much is fairly straightforward, but with some extra effort, you can connect it to the outside world so you can monitor things remotely, and you can also add a touchscreen. Taking it that far, however, requires a fair amount of skill and effort. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a plug and play option? Well, that's what this video is about. Today, we're looking at the AstroBox Touch by AstroPrint. We're gonna start by looking at exactly what AstroPrint is. So here we start on the AstroPrint website and they claim to be the new standard for 3D printing software. If we keep scrolling, we can see that the process is explained. They intend for you to have an AstroBox and then sign up for the AstroPrint Cloud and then use it to manage your 3D printers, your files, data and more. If we look at the software side, beyond the hardware here, we can see that it encompasses use on tablets, phones, and laptops. It's meant to be a completely connected system. You can sign up for the AstroPrint Cloud without buying the hardware, and you can see that the features are listed here. Now it is important to note that if you're gonna sign up for this, there are three tiers, and the cheapest one is free and allows you to use two printers. However, if you wanna run more than that, you're looking at a monthly subscription, and if you're a big business, you need to contact them for the details which are coming soon. If you're already using Octoprint, you can install the Astro Cloud plugin for use with that and you'll get some of the features that you'll see in this video. Here's the plugin interface in Octoprint and you can see that the cloud files are listed, which means you can also use the app to access this printer, the camera and manage your prints. But what this video is really about is the AstroPrint hardware. We have two options. We have an AstroBox gateway, which is this box obscured by the text here and that doesn't come with a screen. Then we have an AstroBox Touch, which is what I've been testing. The AstroBox Touch goes for US $200 and it's based on a Raspberry Pi. It comes with the Pi, a Touch LCD, a stylus, power supply and software license, which means it has all the components you need to make it plug and play and to unbox and use instantly. Alternatively, if you think this was a bit steep and you already had a Raspberry Pi and some hardware components, you can purchase just the software and build your own machine. There's a nice guide in their support section that takes you through all of the different screens that have been tested for compatibility. And one advantage of doing it this way is you could have a much larger touchscreen if that's the way you want it to go. You'll also find for free online a range of different enclosures that you can print, including those integrated into the face of the printer. I really like the fact that there's a cheaper do-it-yourself option, particularly if you've already invested the money on a Raspberry Pi for Octoprint or something else that you have lying around. Let's have a closer look at this one, the AstroBox Touch, as pre-packaged to see how it works. Unboxing of the AstroBox Touch was pretty uneventful. It's nicely packaged, it's got nice graphics on the box, and inside you'll find components that you would probably expect. Beyond some stickers, some instructions, and a five volt power supply that can deliver three amps. There's also a power adapter, which I needed as I'm in Australia. The actual box is really nicely made. It's injection molded, and probably my only complaint is that there's no cavity to store the stylus. After we power on, we're taken through a really easy setup where we select our language, name our instance of our box, and then enter our Wi-Fi details to connect to our local network. After this, you can see if the printer you're using it with is available on the list. If not, that's okay, you can skip it. You're still able to do all of the functions you're about to see. Next, you'll be prompted to sign in with your AstroPrint account. And the final step is to click the red connect button which should configure and connect to your printer automatically. Back on the main screen, we should have three green boxes on the right, and that means we're ready to go. If we explore the utilities menu, you'll find all of the options there to control the printer, such as moving it around, homing, you can change your temperature for both your nozzle and bed. There are presets for common materials, but if you want to, you can also enter a custom temperature and it will heat to that. Everything is really nicely animated, really nicely laid out, and really easy to follow. I found finger touches were mostly reliable. The stylus worked every time, but it is doable just using your finger. One thing I would note is that there's no beep to confirm when you've pressed, 
so you probably need to press a little bit harder than you would expect to make it reliable. Beyond some of the options you might expect to see, like loading and unloading filament, and also changing this print speed and flow rate, there's one option that I particularly like, and that's the G-Code terminal. I've never used a 3D printer that let me input G-Code directly into the printer's interface. You can see here I enter a G29, and when the probing is finished, I get an output of the probed grid, and this type of functionality is really good for setting up new modifications. If we wanna start a print, we press that button, and we can print off a plugged in USB or the internal storage of the AstroTouch box. Once we've selected our file, we get a confirmation menu with some details and mid print, we get up to date information on what layer, what percentage and how long is remaining. We can also tweak settings mid print such as baby stepping. When the print is finished, we'll have a summary of the job and the option to close or print again. Just like Octoprint, if you put the IP address of your AstroBox Touch into your browser, you can access it from any computer on your local network. The options available to us are pretty similar as to what we see on the screen. If we come to Utilities, we'll be presented with a UI that has everything we need on screen, moving the printer, homing, changing temperatures, extrusion, retraction, fan speed, etc. We can also bring up the G-Code terminal and send any custom or set up G-Code that we want. We can test the camera, change the settings, and if we want to start a print, we can come to File Uploader. The G-Code uploads, and in a minute, we'll be given another screen with the option to start the print. You'll see that it's analyzed the G-Code, come up with the size, the layer height, the number of layers, and given an estimate for time. If we come to File Manager, we'll see all of the other previous files that I've uploaded listed here, and we can start a print by clicking on any of them and then clicking this button here. After we do this, we'll automatically be taken to this status screen that shows us how the print is going. It shows the temperature, and once the print gets properly underway, it'll tell us what layer we're on and how long is expected to be left. I don't have a camera connected right now, but if I did, I'd have the option to have a little preview streaming here so I can monitor the print. So all of that is like a really polished version of Octoprint, but with the added bonus of not having to control it just from the computer, but being able to come up and activate it in front of the printer. But a big advantage of this system is the fact that we can extend it with apps and cloud connectivity. Let's have a closer look at that. The AstroPrint app is available for Android as well as iOS and is free. The only cost you'll have is if you're going for a premium account. And here we have the AstroPrint Cloud. Now you can access this from outside of your local network via the web browser like I am here or via the app, which we'll look at shortly. If we come to monitor, we can have a look at our instances of AstroPrint running on our 3D printers. We can see we have the box set up here as well as the one I had set up running through OctoPrint. We have the same options to upload files, but this time remotely. And importantly, this is where we can get access to things such as printer profiles and materials and slicer settings. You can see here I tested with the Ender 3 and any common printer is going to have an inbuilt printer profile. If I click on edit, there's many settings that I can change. And this is very important because my Ender 3 needs additional changes. So I was able to add a G29 for auto bed leveling after homing at the start of print jobs. I can also go into my material profiles and because I have a wham bam bed on mine, I was able to edit my temperature and raise it to 70 instead of 60 for the heated bed. If you are using a more unusual printer, you can create your own printer profile and then go into the slicing settings and everything is the same as Cura. As we can see from going through the side menu, we have all of the options you would expect to find on a proper slicer. Why do we need slicing and printer profile set up for the cloud? Well, let's have a look at the apps. If we explore the apps tab on the touch screen, after authorizing them, we can get apps for Thingiverse and My Mini Factory. This allows us to browse these websites directly from the touch screen and select what we want so we can start prints. Here, I'm gonna start this air spinner and I can inspect the files, get a picture preview of each one before I decide which one I want to print. When I do decide to print, that's where those printer profile and slicer settings come in handy. Unlike some other cloud printing services, I actually have control over the print quality and even things like the fill density, support, or even adding a raft. 
When I hit print, all the slicing is done in the cloud and then the files are downloaded to the printer with a nice little thumbnail preview, allowing me to 3D print without even accessing my computer. In my opinion, that is very novel. Astro Print can also handle cameras attached to the Astro Touch box. And in this case, after testing it, I set it up at the start of the print to make a time lapse automatically. In this case, I set it to take a snapshot after each layer is completed. Everything happens automatically from this point onwards. Let's have a closer look at the Astro Print app. Beyond being able to control the printer like you would expect, you also have direct access to Thingiverse. And in this instance, I'm going to search for one of my print files to see how good the pre-sliced G-code really is. In only seconds, I've searched for the file I want, and then I can hit the button and tell it to print. There's a few more confirmations where once again, I pick my slicing settings and my material before it's sliced in the cloud and then sent to my 3D printer, all without me being anywhere near it. The slicing is really quick and has a really cute animation too. I also appreciate the information given to me at every stage on how long it'll take to print and I really like the little thumbnail too. As well as the usual information, with a camera attached I can take a snapshot to inspect how the print is going each time. You can also set it to stream but my internet unfortunately is far too slow for this. In this instance I decided I wanted to cancel the print, therefore I was able to cancel it, take a new snapshot and verify that the printer had homed and finished. To retrieve our time lapses, we need to go to the cloud and they'll be listed under print captures. You have the option to view them online or what I did was to download them to my computer. As far as time lapses go, they're nothing special. Definitely not as good as an octolapse, but still an acceptable outcome. As for the print quality from the cloud slicing, I'd say it was pretty good. The overhang test was quite clean, as was this vase before I cancelled it. The air spinner was printed all in one piece and the pieces separated beautifully and as the name suggests when you blow on it, it's got this great motion. The only real downside is how long the files take to print. I feel like that's a pretty good overview of my experience with this Astrobox Touch. Overall, I really like it. It's got a really polished interface with a really nice UI, at times whimsical. Look at this little graphic that's overlaid while you're testing the webcam for instance. It's very user friendly, being as plug and play as advertised, but I suppose the downside is it's not as extensible as Octoprint is. There are far more plugins and far more customization options with that, so just keep that in mind if you're making a decision between the two. Overall, I thought the documentation was quite good, but there was a couple of areas where it could be improved. For instance, there were some new features such as the task and maintenance that wasn't documented anywhere, and I found it particularly difficult to find where to go to retrieve my finished time lapses when the prints had finished. Overall, this thing is very good. It's got 90% of the benefits of Octoprint without any initial setup. I think this thing would be an awesome addition to a printer that didn't have a nice touchscreen permanently installed inside the machine. And for me, it's gonna be awesome to use as I review 3D printers, because I can simply move it to that new printer, do minor setup, and then I'll be ready to print with cloud functionality. If you have any thoughts on this, if you've used it before and want to share your experience, please post in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.